We are so full today. <laughs> this is really cool. I hope everybody is comfortable. If anybody gets hot, please let me know and we'll adjust the air. We've got fans going um, where we can open up the back slider. And um, so, okay, Cozy Corner. This is my Cozy Corner concert series. And this, you know, for those of you who haven't been, I see a lot of um, new faces in the crowd. So this is my house concert series and I do these probably once every six to eight weeks. And um, the last one was with Neil Patton in February. And so we've got Gary and Doug here tonight. And the next one is David Nebu in May. Um, we really enjoy doing house concerts because it's just obviously very intimate and very close. And the energy is shared with the crowd and the performer. And it just makes for a really fun show. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, I want to start off by thanking Gary and Doug for coming out. They just uh, came out here. They both live in Boston, Massachusetts. So they flew out today and they're starting, this is the start of their mini tour that they're going to be doing all the way down from, from Salt Lake and then down into Phoenix and Sedona and Mesa and a little, little fun mini tour for them. So I'm glad that uh, they could come and play here tonight. Um, I'm going to start off and then we'll have Gary come up and play. Um, I have a brand new album coming out and I'm not going to play songs from that until the second half. So but you'll hear some new music. That's, that CD is going to come out um, hopefully May 8th is the goal. Um, but anyway, I'm going to start off with um, Out of the Darkness is my um, divorce recovery album. That's kind of how we joke about it. But I basically went through this really, tr this really big tragedy in 2009. And my marriage ended, and it was just devastating to me. And I spent months and months and months um, performing or composing at the piano. And the music was really sacred to me, and I didn't want to share it with anybody. And it wasn't until later when I found happiness that I was like, OK, I'm going to share this music. And I ended up producing this album called Out of the Darkness. And this song is the second song on the, on the album. The first one's called Forsaken. And all of the songs on the album are presented in order that they were written. So it's very much a musical diary of my experience. And this, uh, this second one is the downward spiral of sadness that I went through um, after my ex-husband left. And it lasted for quite a while, and so this song kind of represents that. And I'm going to start off with a really sad piece, so we can get that one out of the way. <laughs> <laughs>
you very much. So first I want to tell you about um, what we do here at Cozy Corner. We also have um, an online audience. And we have a little camera up here on the ceiling that's duct taped so nicely. <laughs> And we have uh, my sister who runs the broadcast, and we are broadcasting this live to people all over the world. And so we have people tuning in, and so we want to say thank you to everyone watching tonight. Um, as always, if you email me at cozycorner at michellemclaughlin.com during the show, you'll be entered into um, the free CD gi giveaway at the end of the show. So don't forget to do that, and um, thank you again for watching. This next song I'm going to play is um, on my album called A Celtic Dream. And Ireland, I took a trip to Ireland in 2008, and I just love it there so much. This, this place is magical to me. And so I came home from that trip and composed an entire album's worth of music. And um, this particular song is one that I play at all concerts. So for those of you who have heard it a thousand times, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, it's one of my favorites to play, and it's one of, it's one of the audience favorites. So um, I'm going to continue with the trend. It's called Irish Rain, and uh, it is my ode to the cool rain in Ireland. So. You know here when it rains, like droplets fall from the sky and there's thunder and lightning and, and it smells really good. Here, there it does that too, but it also has like this cool mist that like encompasses you and just flies everywhere. And I was totally fascinated with this mist. And so I ended up composing this song and it's called Irish Rain.
So my latest release um, is called Breathing in the Moment. And I released it a year ago, February. So it's been out for a year now. It's time for I to have the new album out. Um, but there's a song on that album called The Beauty Within. And to me, it just symbolizes that we just, you know, we all have something beautiful about us. And everything in the world has something beautiful about it. And you just have to take the time to look, or, or in some cases, you just really have to, you know, look behind and, and just really notice the beauty. And so that's what this song represents for me. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it. It's called The Beauty Within. story. Back in 2007, I was not a performer. I did not perform or play for anybody and I was releasing music and sharing it online and with CDs and stuff but getting up in front of an audience was the most terrifying aspect of the whole thing for me and I just didn't do it. And I had just recently gotten um, accepted onto a station called Whispering Solo Piano Radio and um, this guy, Gary Gerard comes into town and he's going to do a show down at Dane's Music and I don't know how he heard about me but I'm assuming it's from Whisperings and 
he uh, sends me a message and he's like, do you want to come do a guest performance at my show? I'm like, no, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> and then I thought about it for a little while. I'm like, okay, I probably should really, if I'm going to, you know, make this my career and everything, I need to probably perform. And all my friends and family encouraged me, you've got to go and do this. And so I did. And I went down and I think I played two songs. And I was so terrified, you guys. I was like shaking and just sick to my stomach. And I was up in front of the crowd and just so terrified. And I totally rocked it in front of the audience. And it was that moment that, like, r r you know, made me all energized and excited to be a performer and do this. And so I owe so much, really, to Gary for introducing or inviting me to be a part of that show. And here we are, however many years, six years later, and it's around the same time of year, last, you know, in 2007. Anyway, here's Gary, and he's here to do a show, and it's just really exciting for me to have him here, and his music is amazing, and he's got four albums out. Um, his most recent album, Light and Dark, was the winner of two awards, Whispering Solo Piano um, Album of the Year and Solo Piano Radio Album of the Year. So it's, it's cool stuff, and I would very much like to welcome Gary Gerard. Wow. Thank you, Michelle. That's what she didn't say is when she got up back in 2007, she was completely natural. I couldn't, nobody could tell she was nervous. And um, I think what happened was we had her come up for one piece and she did so awesome. And everybody's like, would you like to hear Michelle play another one? And everybody's absolutely. So she totally rocked it. It was fantastic. She was really a natural. Um, so thank you, Michelle, for having us here. Um, thanks to the internet audience for being here and up for all of you as well. Um, so I'm going to play my, my first piece here. Thanks to, um, to Tamara. Um, and also, we were talking about this is springtime, and it also happens to be Earth Month. And um, in downtown Salt Lake City, I was spending some time looking at all the, the flowers starting to come up. <coughs> and this time of year is so wonderful, and especially here. It's just beautiful. You have the snow up in the mountains, and then you have the flowers coming up and the buds on the trees. Um, and this next piece, it's called Viva, um, and it's about springtime. And um, out east on Cape Cod, there could still be snow on the ground in April. And you start seeing the daffodils coming through the snow. And you think to yourself, how do they know to do that? I mean, it's, it's cold. There's snow on the ground. How do they know that it's time to come up? And if you really, I mean, think about that. It's, it's, it's really an amazing, you know, it, it's, it definitely astounded me in every year to go through this again. It's like a rebirth. So viva in Italian means alive or to live. It's from the verb vivere, which means to live. But it re means more than that. If you've heard the, the phrase Viva Las Vegas or you know, Viva New York or Viva whatever, it literally means like the desire to live. And that's what this piece is all about. Um, it's called Viva. It's from my first album, The Naked Piano.
uh, this next piece, um, I'm going to dedicate this to, um, just this past week, I lost two, two cousins, both to cancer, just, just last week. So I'm going to dedicate this next piece, I believe some of my family's watching, to uh, Michael and Cheryl. And uh, this piece is off of The Naked Piano Light and Dark. And the album's about um, finding hope and light even when things are tough and things don't go your way. Uh, this piece is called Lanterns. And um, it comes from a story that I was told when I was a lot younger, usually around Christmas time, about um, before we had electricity, you used lanterns to light the room. And obviously, if you had a lantern, you'd want to hang it up high to shine the light so you could see. You wouldn't put it down on the floor. It doesn't shine as much light. And the analogy that I was told as a boy, this was sort of a parable, was that we all sort of have our own light. We have our own talents. And we are challenged to bring that light to the world. And um, that's what this piece is about. It's called Lanterns, and I dedicate it to Mike and Cheryl. Um, so for the next piece, I'm kind of winging it here. So I'm going to ask you, you're going to help me decide which piece I'm going to play next. So we could go with the really difficult to play, never ever performed in public before piece that's on my Light and Dark <laughs> album. Hard to play, but I'm willing to try it, okay? Um, or we could go with sort of a safer one, which is the first one on my album, which is about children. So any, how many people for the real difficult, challenging one Go for it. Yeah. All right, all right. That's it. All right, so this piece, kind of an interesting story, too. So this piece, again, is from Light and Dark. Um, it's about an aurora. So an aurora is this natural display of light, okay? Because always it's light and dark. This is where this whole this piece comes from. It's a natural display of light. But aurora, if, how many of kids, young kids? Okay. So if you know about Disney and the Disney characters, who's Princess Aurora? Sleeping Beauty. So she's better known as Sleeping Beauty. So I get this idea that this aurora is kind of like this bed of light. 
right? Wouldn't it be cool to pretend that that's Sleeping Beauty's bed? So this piece is called Aurora's Bed. I hope it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time ever performed in public, ever. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had to do that more often. So um, I get the pleasure of introducing our next artist, uh, Doug, who, um, it's amazing. We have so much in common, Doug and I. We both live in Boston. 
Our parents both celebrated the 50th anniversaries last year. We have kids about the same age. Um, our wives have gone through similar situations with some health problems. Just amazing, and um, he's such an amazing musician, a great friend. Uh, he has five CDs out, including the 2011 um, Whisperings Album of the Year winner. So it went, I think everybody else must think, something's going on with Boston, because he <laughs> won in 2011, I won in 2012. But, um, something in the water. <laughs> something in the water, yeah. Love that dirty water. Um, so it's my great pleasure to introduce Doug Hammer. <clears throat> So uh, my album Travels, I'd like to tell you just briefly a little bit about that. Uh, when I recorded my debut album Solace, I ended up writing and recording a lot of songs and they didn't all fit on the CD. I, I ran out of space. So I had uh, three songs left over. They were Country Road, Main Morning, and Paris, City of Dreams which later I just turned into City of Dreams. I unfortunately scratched the Paris out. But, uh, <laughs> so I looked at those three songs, I'm like, well, I'll put them on my next album. And I, you know, I just looked at them and I said, hey, how about an album called Travels? You know, they're all about different places. And so that began my, my journey with Travels, which initially was a single CD. And as I was recording it, I ended up composing and recording another album's worth of material. And it all fit together. And what happened was I would get frustrated or stuck, you know, recording a song. And instead of just going down that road, I went down a different path. And so I ended up improvising a lot of material. So the first disc is all handcrafted songs. And the second disc is all improvisations done in, in one take. Um, and that's called Travel's Detour. So it all fit together, and that's in a nutshell the story. So I'd like to play you the title track, Travel's. And uh, this song, to me, is a train, and you could say it's the train of life.
Well, today's a very special day, not just because of this wonderful concert, but it's my dad's birthday. So um, I would love it and appreciate if everyone would join me in wishing my dad and singing happy birthday to my dad. My dad's name is Philip. And internet audience, please join in. I'm, I'm watching it. Please. I'd love it if you sang too. So happy birthday to Philip. song my dad wanted me to uh, play because it's one of his favorites off of Travels and um, you know we get a lot of I grew up in the Midwest actually uh, but I've been in the Northeast uh, quite a long time and uh, in both places we have quite a lot of storms you know tornadoes hurricanes that kind of thing and I just remember as a kid growing up and also just even recently in in Boston's you know uh, we'd have some bad storms and it, it you know nature is such a force you know there can be so much chaos and and damage and destruction and then all of a sudden it blows away and everything is calm and quiet so this song is called after the storm
have two boys. They're seven and nine. And uh, we have Legos <laughs> all over the place. We, I you know, try not to step on them when I don't have shoes on. Um, and this next song has absolutely nothing to do with Legos. But I, <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. You know, anyone with kids, Legos. They're doing a Lego uh, robotics camp for two days next week because they, they don't have school next week. So uh, we're going to have fun with that. Anyways, um, my wife is from France, and we met in England. And uh, I, um, I've seen quite a number of castles in England, Scotland, Wales, and, and France. And then later with the kids, they got interested in castles. And we have a bunch of books about castles, and especially my younger boy. You know, when we uh, go to France and he sees like an, an old crumbling ancient stone wall that was built like, you know, 500 years ago or something. You know, he's always fascinated by that. And um, I haven't seen as many castles as Michelle and, and Liz have seen. <laughs> what, you saw 30 castles in 14 days? And how did you Pretty do much. that? We just drove like crazy. Dri drive <laughs> like crazy. So my boys love castles and, and I, um, I, I wanted to write a song about a crumbling castle. So a lot of times you just see ruins of a castle. And I always wish I had a time machine because I'm like, man, if I had a time machine, I could go back in time. And, and during the heyday of the castle, in its prime, what was it like? You know, all the parties and festivities and all the dramas that happened in the castle. So this next song, which is my dad's favorite song off of Travels, it's called The Castle. Thank you. 
time for intermission. <laughs> First, I want to tell you a few things. Um, Whisperings, solo piano radio. All three of us are part of this radio station. It's an online radio station that you can listen to solo piano music 24-7. There is a free broadcast that you can listen to that has ads. And there is a paid broadcast, which is really inexpensive, and you can get it for, um, you know, without ads. And it helps support and further the broadcast. So um, if you're interested in this, there's cards back there. The, uh, the founder of Whispering Solo Piano is coming to play here next month, David Nevue. And he's one of my piano heroes. And so I'm super excited to have him come play. And is he online watching? Hey, David. <laughs> and uh, the first show that we're, we have is on Saturday, May 11th. And it sold out like super fast. We put tickets up. We didn't really even announce it to anybody yet. And it sold out. So we ended up adding a second show. And that's going to be on Friday, May 10th at 7.30. Or at 7, sorry, 7. And um, I have tickets for sale for that tonight. We've already sold like 15 seats for that show, so there's only about 15 left. If you want to come to that show, get your tickets tonight from, from me. Um, then there is this mailing list sign-up card back here with all three of us on here. And we basically use this to stalk you. So make sure you give us all of your information so that we can do that. Um, <laughs> actually, we're going to use it to be able to notify you for you know, upcoming CDs, upcoming concerts, you know, information about our music. And if you leave it blank, we will put you on all three of us. If you just want to be able to just sign up for just one of us you know, or whatever, check the boxes. But do this also because this is your raffle ticket for the CD giveaway at the end of the show. We're going to give away three CDs. And if your name is not in the bucket, you do not get a free CD or have a chance to win a free CD. So make sure you get this in there. And then we have merchandise, of course, for sale. We have songbooks, we have CDs. And songbooks are a straight $20. But CDs are kind of a, a, what we like to do is, we know that the music, you guys like the music obviously because you're here. And we like the music, obviously, because we composed it. <laughs> and uh, so it's hard to put a price on it and say this is what the CD and the music, is, this is what it's worth. So what we like to do is say to you guys, we want you to give us what the music is worth to you. So if it's like worth a dollar to you, then give us a buck. If it's worth a hundred dollars, then give us a hundred dollars. <laughs> and you know, anything in between, we really appreciate it. Helps go, you know, it helps us to, to you know, continue giving music to you guys. and, and so we want you to be able to take a CD home and enjoy it. There is one exception to this rule tonight. Doug's CD, Travels, is a dual CD. So think of it as you're getting two CDs. So when you, you know, give us your donation for the CD, make sure that you, you know, take that into account. And instead of giving us $100, maybe give us $200 <laughs> for that CD. <laughs> we take credit cards, we take cash, we don't get change. Um, we'd be happy to max out, you know, your credit cards and take all the cash you want, so. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but yeah, that's the way that's the way it works. And if you have any questions for us, we'll sign CDs and hang out with us during intermission. There's snacks. I'm sorry, there's not wine anymore. There's been uh, you know Utah liquor laws and all that prevent me from serving wine anymore. But for future concerts, if you guys want to bring your own wine, that's totally cool. I just can't give it to you on my own. Um, yeah. So we'll be back in 20 minutes to play more music.
Temperature good? Yes. All right, so I have a new album, you guys. It's like so close to being done. It is, um, the songs are off for transcription. The songs have been mastered. I'm just waiting for the final master to come in the mail. Um, the album cover is nearly designed and like literally, it, the goal is to be, um, have CDs in hand for the next concert so that I can have those available for you guys. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the album first. It's called Waking the Muse. And the story behind Waking the Muse is that for a little while after I had finished and released Breathing in the Moment, I just felt totally uninspired and non-creative. And everything I sat at the piano and played, I was just like, oh, I hate this. And I was just not loving it. And so and then I went on tour in June last year with Scott. We had our touring the Ivories up the West Coast. And I came home completely re-energized and had this flow of creativity in me and literally composed most of this album like in July right after I got back from tour in June. And so this, this song that I'm gonna play you first, which is called Waking the Muse, and the album in general is about that. And uh, so I hope you guys like it, Waking the Muse.
you. So I have a brand new song. None of you guys have heard it. Um, I wrote it. This, this is one of, so I've owned this piano now since December. Um, I had a, a different piano before this, and, and this piano is a beast. This piano takes some getting used to, and, and it has some really cool, some cool things that you, you know, with, you can make it with the emotion, and I'm really excited to learn some new techniques with this piano. And this song I wrote on this piano simply because it has amazing, growly, angry bass, this <laughs> piano. <laughs> it just gets in here, and, and I was feeling really um, mad about a situation with a friend that I've been really good friends with, and he did some things to um, upset and ruin our friendship. And so I let that emotion out onto this piano. And so the title of this song, and it's the last song on the album, and I've never played it before, so I'm a little nervous to play it. I'm like a little shaky. <laughs> but uh, it's called Dangerous Obsession. the anger in that piece? <laughs> good. <laughs> good, good. So um, that's the end of my set. I'm going to have Gary come back up. Thank you. Wow, that was kind of 
angry. <laughs> I want to kind of pick up on that too, and I think um, so. This I want to talk a little more about oops, my um, the album Light and Dark. Um, I didn't want to be standing right away. I want to tell the story. Um, so the Light and Dark album, I said it was you know about finding hope and light even when things don't go your way through difficult times, and it was written. My wife was diagnosed with breast cancer at age 37. So you hear that, and then it came back a year later. So you know we went through all this stuff, and we're not unique. A lot of people go through similar situations. So you go through this period, and it's like what Michelle was talking about with the um, out of the darkness, um, the divorce uh, breakup um, piece. But this is similar, um, going through a sickness to somebody that you really love. It's like you have to go through this darkness. It feels like dark, um, so that you can you know, find the light. And my wife and I, she's fine now, so by the way, and if she's out there, hi, Gita. Um, she's doing great now. But we started to appreciate little things, like our children, and the fact that, you know, that we still had each other, that we could wake up and we could see the sun. And all these little things that we take for granted, that we have a house, we have a car, you know, we have food, we have water. You know, all these little, little things that we started being thankful for. So um, this piece that I'm going to play, and the next one that follows, I'm not going to talk between the two, because I'm going to play one right into the next, and there's a reason for that. The first piece is called Out of the Dark. And it's kind of dark, and it's some of it's not necessarily angry, but it's you can see there's a struggle. So um, the piece is about struggling through this dark period, and by the end of Out of the Dark, you start to feel, or at least I feel when I play it, some some relief is starting to happen, and it's only because you've gone through this dark period and you've thought about it and you've, you've you know wrestled with it that you can start to sort of get through and, and see some light. And the piece after it is called Heal. So. It was deliberately on the, on the album, it goes out of the dark, right to heal. And the reason is you come out of this dark period and you're starting to see some light and that allows you now to start to heal. So that's what I'm going to play is out of the dark and then I will, I'll stop, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna go right into heal right after that, okay? So this is out of the dark and then heal.
to welcome back the amazing Doug Hammer. And that was the amazing <laughs> Gary Gerard. <laughs> I'd like to play you something from my first album, Solace. Uh, it's the one with the green leaf and a little water droplet right in the middle of that. And Solace mainly is about my backyard. Um, I moved from downtown, or right next to Cambridge, is a little, little suburb called Somerville, and I lived there for about eight years. And after that, we moved north, about 20 minutes north in a town called Lynn. And in our backyard, we have lots of trees, a lot of critters. We have uh, a pond in the back, actually a wetland, so it kind of goes back and forth. We have ducks ducklings and all sorts of critters. So my, my boys are growing up uh, feeding the ducks and the ducklings and, and it's uh, a little micro zoo back there. Um, I took the, the picture of the uh, cover for, uh, for uh, Solace and uh, after a real bad rainstorm, uh, a lot of times it knocks a bunch of leaves out and uh, I went to the pond and the scum and everything was cleared off. It was all clean water and there was a, you know, few leaves there. And I saw this one leaf with this little water drop and I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I go out there, take a picture, and that ended up being a perfect representation of uh, what that album's about. Uh, so first song I want to play for you is about the dawn of a new day, the promise of a new day. It's called Sunrise.
next song is from Travels, and I dedicate this to my beautiful wife and my two boys, Noah and Nathan, and it's called Back in Your Arms. And now for my final song. Uh, travels, besides being about places and a lot about times, um, is just about movement in general. And uh, I call it my Yang album. Solace is very much my Yin album. Um, and so this next song is called Pendulum.
First, I want to congratulate the online viewers. Um, by the way, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> thank you. That was really awesome. Um, I have to say that I've been okay. So one of the things that I love about having all these different musicians at my house to perform is that I not only get to hang out with these incredible people, but I get to learn from them because I'm self-taught. I didn't take lessons. I'm not trained. And, and so my level of being able to you know, branch out and grow is to explore my own stuff, but then also watch these amazing guys. And Doug is seriously like a piano savant. He can do anything on the keyboard. So I played a song. I have a new song on my new album called Misty Fjords. And I played it for him. And right after I played it for him, he sat down at the piano and recreated my song like almost note for note without even like thinking about it. I was like, what, yes. what is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to have that skill. So, <laughs> you're cool, you're awesome. <laughs> All right, so online viewers, we have three of you. Um, Daniel Case in Greenville, South Carolina, congratulations. Um, Sally Cobby, I don't know where you are because you didn't tell me, but congratulations. <laughs> And Mark Robertson, and I believe, you didn't tell me where, but I know we've talked before, and I'm pretty sure you are in like England or Scotland, um, because you said it was 2.30 your time at 7 a.m. Wow. So he's over in Europe somewhere watching the concert. So thank you so much, Mark, for tuning in. And congratulations to Daniel, Sally, and Mark. I will contact you privately, get your information, and um, I think what I'll do is just send you my new CD when it comes out in a few weeks. So, okay, these are what we're giving away tonight. We have Pianotarium by Scott D. Davis. I'm sure most of you have uh, seen Scott. Scott and I tour together a lot, and we do some concerts. And he has, this album is a um, rock tribute to Metallica, and it's awesome. <laughs> so if you like Metallica, and you like rock music, and you like, like adaptation piano. to piano, Scott is totally the guy to listen to, and you will love this. Hope Resides by Greg Maroney. This is his newest CD. Greg was here in October uh, last year. And Greg is also one of my piano heroes. Whenever I'm listening to music in my office and just you know need, need piano music to listen, most often it's him. So this is a really great CD. And then Rhonda Mackert, this is her CD called A Wild Beauty. And it's dedicated to her trip to Alaska a few years back. Um, she went on a cruise and this is beautiful music. She was here also last year to perform. So good, three good CDs to give away. So I'm gonna let you draw from the bucket. It's not gonna be me. <laughs> yeah, last time Donna won all three CDs. <laughs> <laughs> Patriograph. Woo! <laughs> Which one would you like? Um, how about I have Rhonda's already. Okay. You want Rock or do you want well, Greg? Scott, Greg. How about Greg? Okay. Pass Thank that. you. You're welcome. <laughs> Which one would you like? Well, you know I have Scott's. Oh, so yeah, yes, sure. Rhonda. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. to jam at the piano and so we come up here and just make stuff up off the fly and sometimes it's really awesome most of the time it's really awesome sometimes it's a total train wreck and we laugh and it's a lot of fun and, <laughs> and uh, I have a feeling tonight's improv is not going to be a train wreck because these two powerhouses over here are going to make it easy for me <laughs> so um, let's see you guys want to see how it goes I'll go first to make room for the change out.
you guys all for coming. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Thank you Michelle. Welcome. Thanks, all of you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you. sold a bunch of tickets at intermission so if you want to come there's only like a small handful left so get them get them get them come and see David he's amazing so um, thanks again everybody Thank you.